We'll be speaking to William Segodishu in just a few minutes on the show after he bravely uh, spoke out today. But first, a quick word with the, the reporter on the story, uh, Gillian Pillay. You heard her there. And Gillian, I mean, I mean we, we've heard shocking revelations before, but it's always still so shocking. Priests are meant to be the guardians of, of ethics, the caregivers. Explain what it was like to, to be there today. I think when William stepped into that room, it was a double-edged sword for me, yes, breaking his silence to a larger community that he was really reaching out to, but also making peace with something that he was burdened for, for close to more than three decades. It's a long time to keep such a secret within yourself and you could really get a sense of what he had gone through, his anguish, his torment, you know, repeatedly trying to get the church to intervene. Um, yes, throughout documenting, you know, how he was groomed from money sent to his family, clothes bought at Edgar's, things that he wasn't accustomed to from a very young age, being saved from a life on the streets. And that is how it all started. And William took you meticulously through the detail of how he got to know Father, Father William, Father Bill, as, as, as he's known, and how the shelter that was supposed to be a refuge, which is connected to Christ the King Church in Dwarenfontein, how they worked hand in hand, you know, um, getting these young boys to really go under the wing of, of priests who, you know, from the guys seemed to have good intentions. Mm. And William took you through really graphic detail. I remember him breaking down when he detailed the first rape. And he just, he gasped, he blew air out of his mouth. Almost, it was almost difficult for him to get those words out, you know, to actually tell a larger audience of strangers what what he had gone mm. through. A and you often do heart-wrenching stories, but I can see you're, you're emotional. Mm. It's, it's very hard, you know. Um, no story is the same. And it, it, is, it always leaves you, uh, have I done enough? Can I do more? Um, William's story, how will it help others? So you sit there and you think it could have been someone very close to me that has gone through exactly what William's gone through. And no, you mm. know, the silence, this whole culture of secrecy and silence, particularly within the Catholic faith. We know that Catholic priests have this vow of chastity and vow of um, celibacy, rather, um, not being married. And these aren't the first testimonies we've heard from victims talking out against what they have to endure from Catholic priests. Mm. So yes, from a journalist who talks or, or, or reports on stories like this, these heart-wrenching stories, you definitely left very emotional, very touched by a man who really, you know, he took the bravest step he could have today, talking to the country, letting them into his, his sacred space where he has these feelings and these emotions that he hasn't even managed to de deal with. Yes, he might have dealt with it through counseling, but there are just some things that you're not prepared to share. And William took that brave step today, you know, detailing this harrowing encounter that where up till today he hasn't really gotten Father, Father Bill, Bill's, um, you know, admission of guilt or, or just some apology or something. But the Catholic Church more covering up for the perpetrators within within the institution. All right, so we're going to speak to William Segodisho. He has agreed to come in. Thank you very much, uh, Gillian Pillay. We take a short break and then we'll speak uh, to the man himself who bravely spoke out today. Stay with us.